let's at least just start by looking at the one thing that you are most concerned with, either related to the design itself or to what you're going to do once you actually get in the field and there might be some process that you know is critical and and you're not sure about or you just want some more clarification. Yeah, I mean, the main thing that um, that I was getting lost on is if you look in array calc, you can actually like start with a um, like a, a delay time. It's kind of got it set up and where to put my test point to set the delay time. Cause you know, I put it where I thought would be cool. And then you move it to another part of the room and the delay is, you know, 60 milliseconds off again. And it's where to find that happy medium of putting that point to, you know, tune the room and, and timeline the delays to the mains. Correct. Great. One point of order that I want to point out is that um, these are actually uh, relay speakers. And so it's fine to call them delay speakers, but I just want to make sure that you and I are on the same page that um, by the time you get to the end of the audience uh, over here, yep. um, this speaker is still covering them, or at least that's your intention. I don't think they're going to be hearing this guy anymore. Correct. So there's this area here of overlap, and then this guy takes over, and then he becomes a dominant force. So by the time you get back here, you don't really hear this guy anymore. Thus, we call this a relay, so it's sort of like handing off to the other guy. Copy that. Okay. So because of that, that that's going to – and I'm not just trying to be annoying and pedantic. That actually will affect um, how we do the alignment depending on what we call this. So if we – call this a relay speaker now because there's an there's an overlap here and then this guy takes over then uh, our mic placement is going to for our delay is going to be somewhere in between on axis of the main and on axis of the relay now where exactly those positions are i don't know but you know with this type of array here they tend to be somewhere in the center of their coverage area. So if you just look at this array guy and we back out a little bit here, then probably coming out of the middle of this guy and then whenever he hits the audience over here probably is going to be on axis. If you end up having an on axis position here, and an on-axis position for your delay, I'm sorry, your relay speaker that is then uh, back here somewhere. Then somewhere in between those two, the point where they hand over coverage from one to the other, there's going to be this crossover point, right? Right. So the first thing that you're going to do is, you know, set the levels of your main and your relay and it's possible that they'll just end up running at zero so no attenuation oh i keep clicking on that sorry side no attenuation they'll just run at zero and uh you know looking at your design here my guess is that you were you're going to need all the power that you can get correct uh, to and, make this work. and i didn't get to actually place the speakers where i wanted to because of uh had they added some video screens plus the rigging points in the ballroom aren't ideal for where I originally designed it. So they're a lot out wider where I wanted them. Yeah. They're about 30 feet off, 30 feet in, and I have them about 45 feet in. Um, so, you know, we get to play the game where video takes over and rigging points of the ballroom is just kind of where they landed. Yep. Yep, that's how it goes. And uh, so I can tell that you're working with some limitations here and, and doing your best to like make this work. And I can appreciate that. And the good news, though, is that, you know, with limitations, things kind of get easier. If you can change everything and, and you have any placement location and you can do any aim, um, you know, that's great. And then you can, you know, hopefully deliver um, a better, more consistent show across the audience. But if we have lots of limitations, then, you know, we can kind of throw all that out the window. And now what do we have left? Well, you're probably going to be running both of these arrays at, you know, full blast at zero, oh, yeah. basically at unity. And then your job gets pretty easy 
because then all you need to do is place your microphone somewhere in here, probably, where they are overlapped. Um, and you're just going to find the point where they have equal level. So you do that before you actually do any time alignment because you want to be able to see these two peaks on your live IR or what, are, what audio analyzer are you using? Uh, I'm using Smart DI2. Okay, great. So Smart DI2, perfect. So you have a single channel. And I believe in Smart DI2, there is a live IR window at the top yes. of the screen. Right? Yes. Great. So um, you are probably familiar with this phenomenon that if you turn on one source and you measure it and you see a peak in the live IR, if you turn on another source and it's arriving later or before it's not synchronized, you see another peak, right? Correct. Okay. So you want to be able to see those two peaks on your live IR window. And then you're basically going to go searching for that crossover point. And so you'll, you'll probably start over here and you'll have your microphone and then you'll sort of walk back with it or you'll guess, guess where you think it's going to be. Actually, that makes a lot more sense because you want to be efficient with your time. You've got a lot of rows here to deal with. You got a big space. So just turn both of these uh, arrays on and you've done your EQ already. So everything's um, kind of sounding at least on axis with solo elements, one array at a time. They sound fine. You don't necessarily have to have them both on together sounding good, but you've turned each one on. You've done your EQ. It sounds pretty good. So now you're just going to do your time alignment between them. So you can basically just walk around this area where you think the crossover is going to be until you hear what is like match level. And it's really not that hard. You can probably just like, you know, a little to the left, a little to the right, up a few rows, back a few rows. You'll, you'll hear where in the high frequencies, you start to hear this, both of them, um, maybe not in time, but they're about the same level. You'll probably hear like, lots of phasing, stuff like that. So you'll just use your ears to find where you think that location is, and then you put your mic there. And then hopefully on the live IR, you may have to zoom in or zoom out, you'll see these two peaks. And one of them will be a little bit taller than the other because uh, it's pretty sensitive, right? So as close as you could get it with your ears, you probably didn't get it exactly right. So then you'll be on axis with these arrays, and then you'll move down one row and see if the peaks are closer now and if they're not maybe you went the wrong direction now the other one's too tall so then you go back up one row eventually you'll find a spot one row where you're on axis with these guys where both peaks are pretty close or as close as they can be that is your crossover position that is where you set the delay once you have both of those running together you should be able to Measure the main, you see the peak at zero on your live IR. Turn that off. Measure the, I keep calling it the delay. I'm probably confusing you, sorry. No, no, I, I'm, I'm following everything. <laughs> you got it, okay. You turn on the relay array and you see that peak come up at zero too because you set your delay correctly, okay? And then you turn them both on together and then they get even bigger. The peak gets even bigger because now they're both aligned um, and you should also be able to see that they are masked in the phase graph and uh, you're getting summation in the high end of your magnitude trace. So if you go here, which is under alignment and you hit test point, you can physically drop a test point. And then over on the right side, you see the blue and, and the red lines. Um, and you can mess with the delays to land them, you know, to get like a ballpark of timing. Cool. Yeah. But my confusion was like, oh, well, this looks like a solid spot to put my microphone roughly to get like a close ballpark. But mm -hmm. then when you move your test point to say center, your delays are way 100% different. Potentially over here somewhere is on axis with your main. And then potentially over here somewhere is on axis with your relays somewhere in between here and here is going to be this crossover position. So let me clear this drawing and then draw another position. So probably uh, around 
this area of overlap is where you're going to find your crossover. So why don't you take your um, test point there and just drop it, move it around some different positions there until you find where those sources have the same peak level on your graph over there. Got super close there. Yes, and they're close to each other. Okay, so yeah, keep uh, sort of clicking around, getting closer and farther away. You see the peaks of red and blue. Um, go back to that area that we were talking about where there probably be an overlap. There you go. And get a look. Now keep going closer to the main. This way? Or? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, inward? In the, okay. Yeah, in the vertical plane. There we go. Okay, so now we see them farther apart. Now stay on that, um, stay on that particular y-axis, and just go deeper in the x-axis, little by little, until you see the the peaks match in height. Oh, okay. So you went a little too far. So now I'll go back a tiny bit. So this is good. This is, I think, I don't know how accurate this is, but this is kind of simulating the game that you're going to play in the field. So let's say that that's it. Like that's really close, right? right. So now adjust your delay until those peaks are on top of each other. And am I, am I worried about this second group of peaks or is that just like ambient noise? If you see like there's two, two reds, two blues. Am I yep. trying to line both sets up or am I just worried about that main high peak? No, those, that's, that's from the other side. Oh, copy that. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to just mute the right side. Uh, there is. I can do that. There you go. See that disappear. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So roughly, so now when I get into the field, I know if I put my mic in this general area, I can start with a 100 millisecond delay instead of starting at zero and build myself up, which, you know, takes more time, which we normally don't have. Yep. That'd be great. You are, if you can already be in the right ballpark. Yeah. That was my, my big thing is, cause like I said, as soon as you move this point out, you know, now obviously I moved it, you know, a couple hundred feet there, but we're off again. So that's where I was getting lost and where to physically set my point to. Time. Oh, sure. So I know you're not going to get it 100% perfect in every point in the room, but, you know, as close as I can. Right. So the, the reason that we want to find, there's a lot of reasons, I guess, but the two main reasons that I can think of right now for why you want to find this point where you're matched in level is number one, because that's where you have the biggest opportunity for reward and the biggest opportunity for to create a big problem. So matched level, matched time, matched phase, then we can get 60 B of summation. But if we do it wrong, we can get also, you know, lots of cancellation, create lots of ripple, comb filter, all right. this stuff. The second reason why we want to find that point of matching level, matching magnitude to set our delays um, is because then once you move away from that point, then you should move into isolation with one of the elements. So in this case, you have relays. So as you move deeper into the venue, the relay starts to take over. You hear less of the main. And so as the timing starts to fall apart, then it should not It should matter less and less because you'll mainly be hearing the relay. Right, because the mains aren't getting to that back of the room. Makes total sense. This is, It seems that way from your design, yeah. And then as you move closer towards the mains, um, again, the timing will start to fall apart. But you'll move into isolation with the main and you'll, you'll hear less of the relay speakers. In the field, one thing that I think will make it faster since you're using smart is using that live IR. I think for a long time I was using just the magnitude trace. And so then I would solo main, solo relay, solo main, solo relay, move the mic, solo main, solo relay, move the mic, solo main. So it would take forever. Um, and then I realized that I could turn them both on together. And as long as they're pretty close in the live IR, then I just have to move the mic a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then I find the place where doo, 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 those peaks match and then just line them up with the delay. That's, that's awesome. That's exactly what I was looking for.
<laughs> okay, cool. So we're recording this now. Uh, what would be great is um, after your show, what, uh, what's the date of the show? This show's not until the second week of July. Okay. But I so have to after... submit everything for the cross rentals and, you know, all that good stuff. So what would be great is after July, if you and I could meet again and we could take a look at what you actually measured in the field, you know, try to try to store a few traces of you actually doing this process. And then we can see like what those peaks look like, uh, what what did each measurement look like solo and then combined at your crossover point. Yeah, absolutely. I'll record everything. I'll make it. I, I now have a Nathan folder on my on my uh, desktop, so we'll just shove it in there. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 